Welcome back to Mason Talks. So yesterday, I was at the NBA's Rising Stars event in downtown Cleveland, and in the new tournament format style where they had multiple teams competing, Team Rick Barry, which featured Evan Mobley and Isaac Okoro of the Cleveland Cavaliers, ended up winning the whole thing. And despite the fact that Cade Cunningham of the Detroit Pistons won the event's MVP award. My big takeaway from yesterday's Rising Stars event was that Evan Mobley is a beast. Evan Mobley is a dominant player already, and I know that this was just a fun exhibition event But from what we saw of Evan Mobley and the potential that he showed yesterday, which he shows basically on a on a nightly basis with the Cleveland Cavaliers in regular season play. I thought that Evan Mobley showed yesterday why he can not only be a dominant player, but possibly the best player in the NBA. And it really boils down to three different factors. And the first one, which was on display from the very moment he hit the floor in his first game with Team Barry, was that Evan Mobley can basically do what he wants in the paint. And the main reason why this should be scary for the rest of the NBA is that his post play is only going to continue to get better as he develops and gets bigger and stronger with more years in the league. But yesterday, you know, Cade Cunningham and, 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 you know, other players on, on Mobley's team would look to him in the paint. And if Mobley got positioned near the basket and got the ball, it was a wrap. He was going to throw it down. He was going to, you know, posterize players. And it, it, it was basically a guaranteed two points. And, you know, this is something that we've seen with the Cavaliers as well. And, you know, the Cavs like to do this with Jared Allen. um, But Evan Mobley has basically um, improved every single game this season in terms of his post play. And now we're at a point with the Cavaliers where his back to the basket game is a real threat. And it's going to continue to develop, and he's already got some, uh, you know, potential for fadeaway moves, and he's able to kind of shoot jump shots in that spot. So, you know, because of his size and because of his length that he has, Evan Mobley can be a, you know, dominant low post player, and it's only going to continue to get better as he further develops. But continuing on, the other things that he showed yesterday was that he has the skills to not only be a sort of uh, rim runner in transition, but he can also bring the ball up and almost be a sort of uh, playmaker like we've seen guys like uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo do at that power forward position. Like he's not, he, it's not necessarily a negative when Evan Mobley handles the basketball like it is with some other NBA bigs. And I think that this is where he can really be great, especially with teammates like uh, Darius Garland. Uh, with the Cavaliers in transition, we do have a when you have a guy the size of Evan Mobley who can handle the ball with competence, but can also like catch a lob from half court and dunk over your best defender like he did earlier in the season, um, you know against the uh, Milwaukee Bucks when he when he threw down a dunk over Giannis. When you have a threat like that. Um, it's number one it's completely unstoppable and it also opens up other opportunities for your teams like I think there have been a lot of moments this season where either Jared Allen or you know you know Jared Allen's had open opportunities for for alley-oops or Kevin Love has had open opportunities for three-point shots because defenders have to pay attention to Evan Mobley and they have to know that if he cuts to the basket he can go up you know above the rim and and make a play on you know those types of passes and he can he can you know throw down these incredibly athletic uh alley oops and you know it it gives guys like Darius Garland room for slight error with their passes just because of his sheer athleticism and you know that's that's the real sort of freaky thing is that uh his athletic abilities and his skills can you know shine in places that aren't just the low post like yes his low post play is dominant but he can also you know go outside 
and and you know handle the basketball and make smart passes. And it, it, another thing that you see him working on is three point shooting. And obviously he's not there yet. Like Evan Mobley's not a good three point shooter yet. But if he's able to master just like the corner three, um, you know, we saw yesterday in that little uh, NBA 75th anniversary shooting competition thing they had. Um, Evan Mobley and Josh Giddy were on a team, and Mobley took a corner three, which was supposed to be representative of Ray Allen's NBA Finals quarter uh, corner three shot. And you know he shot it with confidence and made it immediately. And you know that's with no defenders near him. Obviously, that's with no real pressure on. But you know with his size, if he can spread out uh, to the beyond the three point arc and start hitting those consistently. Like, for real, it's a wrap. I mean, he will be the best player in the NBA because if he starts shooting threes and if NBA teams have to start, you know, chasing him out to the three-point line, he's going to be unstoppable because if you run out real aggressively to try to contest a three, the Mobley has shown he can go around you. He can go up over you. He can throw a dunk down over you. He can he can get his back to the basket. And, you know, just with the more and more we see Mobley play – um, in the NBA and in these, you know, e- even just exhibition events, when you see his potential on display, it's a complete and utter shock that you know team that the Pistons and the and the Rockets didn't take him. And listen, you know, they got okay, they got good players. Cade Cunningham, obviously, you know, Cade Cunningham literally won the MVP thing yesterday. Jalen Green has potential to be a really good scorer, but I, I mean, I really think Evan Mobley can be a transcendent player in the NBA and I think he can be the type of guy who can lead a championship team in Cleveland. I mean, he's showing these skills in his rookie season. He's still incredibly young. He's still going to get better and if his trajectory continues to to skyrocket like he's at right now, he is going to be a, a an MVP candidate routinely. I think he can be like Giannis. I think he can be like Anthony Davis. I think he can be a guy uh, you know, like Joel Embiid. I really think that Evan Mobley can be the most dominant player in the NBA. Um, so obviously, the Cleveland Cavaliers should be thrilled with that. So, you know, j- just watching Evan Mobley at the NBA's All-Star Weekend, I think his his skills and his potential were definitely on display. So uh, the rest of the league probably should be taking notice at this point, because if they didn't, um, Evan Mobley is just going to destroy you in the, the coming weeks. Um, but let me know in the comments. What do you think Evan Mobley's true ceiling is? Do you think he's an MVP contender? Do you think he can get that award? Or do you think he's just simply going to be sort of a routine all-star guy? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for listening to the Mason Talk Sports Show. I will see you in my next episode. Goodbye.